We get to this finish and there's a tight Wellens Vuelta 2020 style uphill corner. Like when he got there first ahead of Mike Woods, it's a stepped corner. It starts bending, straightens, then it straightens and bends gently. And then a sharp left-hander, we see Schmidt on the inside line. He sees Bowman trying to get up next to him on his right shoulder. It's a left-hand corner. Bowman comes up. Schmidt starts sprinting. They're side by side, side by side. Bowman probably is like five centimeters ahead of him, 10 centimeters on the outside. But they are next to each other, basically shoulder to shoulder. And before the apex of the corner, Bowman swings in and chops uh, Schmidt's front wheel. Schmidt has to emergency brake to stop being crashed. And then Bowman himself misses the apex because he was entering the corner so fast. He goes very wide in the corner and nearly has to ho- he has to hold it up just. And basically everyone nearly crashes behind him. And Bowman wins the stage, Schmidt's second, and Schmidt wasn't happy. How do you read this Benji, this very, very odd and unfortunate finish? Well, first of all, on paper, the deviation rule is made for a a sprint that is a straight parkour. Like, they say that a rider should not deviate from his lane and therefore endanger another rider. But if we look at this finish, it's not necessarily a plain sprint finish. It's not a straightforward finish either. There's that corner, like you mentioned, and that influences this a lot because on paper, the ideal way to ride through this corner is to take the outside line initially, take the apex and come out on the outside as well. But the problem is, if you're sprinting against each other in a finish like this, if there's someone in that apex, in that apex of the corner that you're going to try and take, and you force that rider to break or crash into you, then in my opinion, you are breaking the rule. So in my opinion, Bauman should on paper be relegated if the deviation rule is applied here. But I do want to note like, what are we doing? Sprinting in corners? Like, it's riders should be able to do that if, a, of course, a sprint has a corner. But I mean, as an organizer, you know that if multiple riders come to this finish, that it's destined to have an issue. We had a similar finish on Etna as well, where we almost had to doubt the uh, Kamna versus Juanpe. Wellens back in the day in the Vuelta as well with a shady corner. But how did you see this specific uh, situation? I think, again, yeah, like the organizers didn't think it was going to be a mass sprint uh, between, or not a mass sprint, between five guys, six guys. They were probably hoping that wouldn't be the case. Although, like, it's just not that hard to climb. As I said, it's 4K, 6.5%. Like, um, I don't know. It's the ind- the sprint deviation rule, whatever. The clear rule that's been broken here, in my view, with Bowman is he's endangered Schmidt. And like we've got on YouTube, the screenshots, he chops Schmidt before the corner. It's not a case of, oh, he took the apex and Schmidt's wheel was, he he overlapped his front wheel, you know, like Ewan did with Merlier through that chicane in the Tour de France stage three. No, they are going straight at the blue hoardings and Cohen Bowman takes the corner way too fast because he is basically trying to break check and slash chop uh, Schmidt. He does so, and that's why. Like when you're looking at the screenshots after the apex, which Bowman missed, and you're like, oh, Schmidt's behind him. It's like, yeah, because he had to emergency break before the corner because he was being chopped. And I don't think Bowman out sprinted him to anything. Bowman was just dive bombing like way too fast the corner, and it meant he missed it himself. So. I think it's a real shame. I think Schmidt got dudded here, and I think Bowman should have been relegated. He endangered not just Bowman, uh, not just Schmidt, uh, Bowman did, but the other riders and kind of denied a fair finish. But people disagree. It's not like F1, I think, which has like you've got to leave enough space for the guy inside, which I think this is a sort of similar scenario. But yeah, do you think Flas Verdict, Benji, I don't know, like, did you expect them when you saw it happen? Did you expect a relegation? Uh, I did not. I did not expect a relegation. And I also didn't expect everybody to like agree that it would be a relegation, especially when we saw that the helicopter shot wasn't there. There was a tree in its way. So from that point onwards, if you see it from the front angle, then you're going to have people that are going to be saying, oh, it's the other way around and so forth. But to me, it's uh, it's simple. It's a clear relegation based on the rules as they are written. And perhaps the rules shouldn't be written this way. But hey, that's the rule set we got. And that's the one we apply. 
My last word on the Bowman thing, unfortunately, the helicopter shot was obscured by the trees. So another, we only have the front on. The front on's the least useful. I think if we had the helicopter overhead unobscured, this would be much more clear to people because I don't think people are going to agree with my stance as much as maybe they do sometimes. But thanks as always to Zwift for supporting the Lantern Recycling Podcast. As I've said, they make your online cycling training fun. They have for Benji and myself. If you want to check out Zwift, you can go to Zwift.com for a free seven-day trial through the link down below. And maybe follow them on Instagram as well to be kept abreast of the news happening with Zwift, which there's some pretty big news coming this year with Zwift.